welcome back everyone. Um, our fifth talk today will be given by Dr. Abdulaziz Bakhshwain. Dr. Abdulaziz is a PGY1 surgery resident at King Fahad Medical City. Uh, Dr. Abdulaziz will be talking about how to ease the SMLA exam. Uh, Dr. Abdulaziz, you can talk, you can start uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, I hope you uh... Uh, had benefit uh, over the last few sessions that we had. Uh, I know it's uh, a lot to take in at, uh, at once in one day, uh, but inshallah, yani by the end of the day, you will, uh, uh, you will have uh, a better understanding of the, of the entire process and uh, uh, how to uh, you know, do, do the applications to the best of your ability, inshallah. Uh, so now uh, we'll be talking about the SMLE, okay? The Saudi Medical Licensing Examination. When it comes to the SMLE, remember the SMLE accounts for 50% of your CV points, or if your, not CV points, of your cumulative points. Uh, so 50% is uh, uh, allocated for the SMLE exam. So it's a big chunk of, of, uh, uh, of your uh, points. Uh, and it's very important that you uh, try your best in obtaining the highest score that you can, especially if you're looking for a competitive specialty in a competitive location like Riyadh or Jeddah or you know, uh, Eastern Province. Uh, so that's uh, important to keep in mind. So uh, preparing for the assembly, so our objectives in, in this talk, we're gonna talk about the assembly itself. What is it and what is it composed of? Uh, and uh, what, why should they take the exam? Of course, the main reason is to uh, uh, you know, uh, be licensed by the Saudi Commission and to uh, apply for the residency program in Saudi Arabia, but there are other reasons uh, that will uh, uh, go over uh, the best time to take the exam, uh, what's considered a good score, uh, what are the best resources uh, to prepare for the exam, uh, how to utilize the, the resources effectively, and I'll just mention some uh, of my uh, personal experience, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, it can uh, resonate with some of, some of you and maybe help you during your preparation. So, uh, what, what is the SMLE? It's the Saudi uh, Medical Lesson Examination. It is administered by the Saudi Commission for Health Specialities. Uh, uh, the exam itself is composed of three blocks. Each block has 100 questions, and you have 120 minutes to solve each block. Okay, so uh, it's six hours in total, uh, uh, and you have a 45 minute break that you can take between the blocks. Okay, uh, of course, the SMLE exam is a requirement. Uh, for all uh, those who graduate from, you know, uh, uh, medical schools in Saudi Arabia, or those who uh, who came from uh, abroad, uh, they, those who finished the medical school abroad and they wanna uh, do residency here in Saudi Arabia, you must take this medical exam. I have to pass it in order to be re registered and uh, licensed by the Saudi Commission in, in order for you to practice medicine in Saudi Arabia, either to practice medicine or to, or to be a trainee in medicine uh, in whatever specialty that you're looking for. Uh, so uh, the three blocks, of course, uh, uh, they have uh, all, all sorts of questions uh, ranging from medicine, surgery, or vegan, pediatrics. So the blocks are not, uh, you know, divided based on uh, based on uh, uh, subspeciality or based on uh, topics. No, they're they're randomized. Uh, although sometimes that uh, you can see that there's a trend. You know, maybe the first block is mainly. Uh, you know, medicine, the second block is mainly surgical, third block is mainly like ob and pediatrics. Usually there is a trend, but it's not necessary. Uh, but uh, when you take the exam, uh, you might yourself might notice that trend. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, from the uh, uh, the blueprint, uh, which is published by the Saudi Commission. This is how they uh, divide the number, of, the number of questions in the exam. So medicine has the biggest chunk, around 30% of the questions are uh, from internal medicine, 25% are obigani and pediatrics uh, each, and then surgery around 20%, and then there are ethical questions. Uh, they vary uh, between exams, but uh, they're not that much, uh, maybe like 10 to 15 questions total in, in the entire exam. Uh, so this is how the questions are uh, divided between the specialties. Uh, so why, sh why should they take the exam? Of course, the biggest reason is to apply for the uh, Saudi residency match. And of course, scoring ha scoring higher means you have more points, means that uh, you have a better chance of uh, 
uh, of matching into your desired specialty, especially if it's a if it's a competitive specialty. Uh, to obtain medical practice license, uh, so it's a requirement by the Saudi Commission. Even even if you're not, uh, uh, for example, if you, even if you're not applying for the match for the matching uh, uh, this year, for example, uh, for the for the residency match, uh, you, you still have to take the uh, the SMLE in order for you to practice medicine. For example, if, if you're looking for a service, uh, service, uh, you know, opportunity, a service residency here in Saudi Arabia, you still have to be licensed by the Saudi Commission. It's a requirement by all hospitals. You cannot, you know, touch a patient. You cannot manage a patient without having this uh, license. Uh, also, recently, uh, it's uh, uh, required uh, for you to apply for medical uh, for for a medical license, for example, for example, those who are, uh, you know, uh, um, planning to apply to the uh, to the U.S. Uh, to the U.S. match, uh, of course, the, the U.S. match has, has its own requirements, and one of those requirements is to be ECFMG certified. Uh, and uh, uh, over the past two years, the uh, the ECFMG certification process changed uh, a lot because of the COVID and uh, many changes that, that have that have taken place over the over the last few years. Uh, so there are there are many pathways uh, in, uh, through which you can apply for the ECFMG certification, and one of them is to be licensed uh, in the country uh, where you graduated uh, your medical school. So for those those of us who are graduating from Saudi Arabia, you have to be licensed from Saudi Arabia uh, in order to be eligible for ECFMG certification. So it's a requ now it's becoming a, a requirement uh, for ECFMG certification. So. Uh, uh, even, even if you're not applying for the Saudi match and, you're, and your plan is to apply for the U.S. match, you still have to take this immediate exam. Uh, what is the best time to prepare for and take the exam? Uh, I think it was mentioned by uh, my colleagues. Uh, probably by the end of uh, final year, uh, beginning of internship, or just before the beginning of internship, this is, this is I think, the ideal time to start preparing uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the main reason is... Uh, uh, by the end of your fifth year, or by the, by the end of your final year, you will have, uh, you know, uh, went through all of the different uh, uh, topics, all of the different specialties, all of the different blocks that uh, that are required in medical school. So you will have uh, a much better understanding of, uh, of all the topics, either surgical or medical. So you'll have, you know, uh, at least uh, uh, a basic uh, base of knowledge uh, in these topics. Second reason is that uh, before before the, the, the start of internship, usually there is a you know a period of two or three months that you're free, uh, and that period you can utilize by starting by, by starting to prepare for the SMLE exam. Uh, and the earlier you take it, uh, so let's, let's say that that you took your first attempt, you know, uh, just just before the beginning of internship or you know the first month of internship, this will give you time to take more attempts in, in order to improve your score. Okay, so try to take the first attempt as soon as possible or, you know, by the beginning of internship so that you give yourself time uh, to improve your score in case you need to improve your score. Uh, so th this is important to keep in mind. And how many times can I take the exam? I think it, it, it was also mentioned. Uh, just to reiterate uh, about this point, uh, you can take it four times in one year, okay, in one academic year or in one uh, uh, calendar year. Uh, you can take it four times if you fail the first attempt. So let's say you took it now, you failed. You have three more attempts, okay, uh, for the exam. If you if you if you take it now and you pass, then you have two more attempts within that year. Within that same year, you have two more attempts to improve your score. After that year finishes, you have one attempt per year uh, after afterwards uh, to improve your score. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to make sure that uh, you understand this point. Uh, so what are the resources? Uh, again and again, previous questions, okay? These are the most important resources that you can uh, use for preparing to uh, for the SMLE exam. Uh, there are many question banks. Uh, these are maybe the most famous, Earth, uh, Glory, and Penguins. Uh, maybe there are others uh, you have to ask around and you have to uh, join different Telegram groups in order to be updated because uh, this was uh, and during the time I took my, my SMLE exam, uh, these were uh, the most famous ones. And I think they're still the most famous ones. Uh, usually, uh, year after year, uh, the, the people who are coordinating these groups, uh, they change, but the, the, the group itself uh, uh, you know, remains. 
so the questions are sometimes in, you, have, you have to keep this in mind. It's a very important point that the questions are usually incomplete or they're misunderstood or they're solved incorrectly. You know, these are uh, these collections are based on people's memory. So uh, people people differ in, their, in the way they memorize and how strong their memory is. So uh, usually people when, when they take the exam and they come out, they they try to remember the questions and uh, they try to write the questions from their memory and from their understanding. So they might have misunderstood the questions or they might have uh, missed some key elements in the question. Uh, so just keep that in mind, okay? The questions are not perfect uh, and uh, uh, it's important to keep that in mind when you study. Uh, uh, sometimes it's important to focus on the topic itself, not the question content, okay? So you have, you have a question which is unclear, ambiguous. Don't, you know, uh, focus on the question itself and the answers in, in the question itself as the way it was present, presented in the, in the collections. Maybe you just need to understand the topic itself, okay? Maybe you have to go read, uh, read about that topic itself, not uh, to take the point from the question as it is written. Uh, you will have to use additional resources, of course, in order to uh, complete your understanding, in order to have uh, a better picture of the, of the different topics and different questions that are asked, okay? And of course, you will need these resources to, uh, uh, to correct any wrong answers, okay? Because as I said, these are not perfect collections. You, you will find the wrong answers, for sure. You will find the wrong answers. You will have to look for the answers for the answers yourself, or you just have to follow them blindly. It's up to you. But I, I highly recommend that if you have a doubt in a question uh, that you're not sure of, maybe you think that the answer is different, then you should go and do your own research and find, try to find the correct answer. If you cannot find it in the resources, go ask you know uh, consultants in the hospital. Go ask residents. Ask your colleagues. They might have found you know a good resource that can answer your questions. Uh, so the most commonly used resources uh, 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 during the time that I uh, that I was preparing for the exam, many, me and many of my colleagues and the people I know uh, were using UpToDate. UpToDate is, uh, is a tremendous resource. It can uh, answer a lot of your questions, but not always. Amboss uh, is very, very, very good. Uh, it gives you a very nice uh, overview. Uh, it's very organized. It's to the point. Uh, so... Uh, uh, you might benefit from uh, using Ambos as well. Uh, there are courses that are given by doctors or institutes. Usually they uh, uh, they have announcements on Twitter, uh, some advertisements on Twitter or Telegram or WhatsApp groups. Uh, these uh, uh, courses, they're usually long, okay? Uh, and usually they focus on a certain discipline or a certain topic. Uh, and usually they don't, they don't give you a comprehensive uh, uh, you know, approach or comprehensive uh, review of, of the topics. Uh, so you can use them, but that's up to you again. Uh, if you feel that you're uh, weak in a certain area, in a certain discipline, you might benefit from them. But in general, uh, I don't, like personally, I don't think they are, uh, uh, you know, a make or break deal uh, in, in preparing for the assembly exam. So how to utilize the resources effectively? Okay, so now you have the resources, you have the previous questions, you have Amboss, you have UpToDate, uh, you might have other resources uh, that you find uh, useful. Uh, so try to follow the collections of one group, okay? So stick to one, uh, you know, uh, previous collection. So like Earth or Glory, don't try to uh, look at all of them because sometimes they will have minor differences that will distract you, okay? And it will confuse you. Uh, so try, as much as possible to stick to one, uh, you know, a set of uh, uh, collections. Uh, be systematic, try to be systematic, you know, start with one discipline, then, then go to the next. So, you know, you might start with surgery, then move on to medicine and uh, so forth, because uh, otherwise it, it's a distraction, it's gonna take you longer uh, to prepare. Uh, it, it will organize your thoughts and it will save you time. Uh, and partner with, with your colleagues, uh, it's a very nice way to, to, to review and to, um, uh, go over, you know, ambiguous questions, questions that are not uh, clear. Okay, so uh, maybe have a study group with uh, with your colleagues, uh, with some some of your friends that you trust, that are actually preparing for the exam and they're taking it seriously. Uh, so do review sessions maybe once per week. Uh, you know, gather together and discuss some of the questions. Um, it's going to give you a very uh, uh, good. Uh, understanding of, uh, of, 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 the, of of the difficult questions, especially.
Okay. Uh, how to deal with unclear or vague or incorrect questions. Uh, so as I said before, ask around, ask your friends, residents, consultants, uh, they might have the answer. Uh, use up to date or ambos to get a clear understanding of the topic and the most likely answer uh, or other or other you know resources uh, that you might that you might find useful in. Uh, ambos as I said it, it has a great library and it, it has also an excellent question bank. The library is very organized uh, to the point it gives you the the most important uh, uh, you know points in, in every topic. Uh, it gives you the, like the most important diagnostic test. It gives you the first line treatment uh, for for most of the topics, for most of the uh, 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 topics that are covered in the SME. Uh, you can also use the question mark in Ambos, but the question mark in Ambos it's uh, it's different than uh, how the questions are written in the SME. Okay, they're not going to be very very helpful uh, when it comes to preparing for the SME, but uh, maybe just for practice you can use them. Um, and as I said, any other trusted reference that you can use or, and that you might find useful, uh, but try to limit your resources. Don't use uh, a lot of resources because this is gonna distract you and it's gonna uh, waste your time. Uh, how to deal with stress and burnout. Uh, so starting your preparation as early as you can will help because this will give you a head start. Uh, have re realistic goals for yourself. So, uh, in terms of score, in, te in terms of st studying, you know, don't say oh, I want to take the exam. You know, in the like in two weeks, and you haven't started the, uh, studying. It's going to be very difficult for you. So, be realistic with yourself. And score-wise, again, uh, if you want to, if you want a higher score, you should put more effort into into preparing for the SME. You know, maybe one week or two weeks is not going to cut it. You know, you, you got to put more effort into it. Uh, take frequent breaks. Don't just uh, study non-stop. Uh, it's gonna uh, burn you out. Uh, you're gonna uh, hate the, uh, the 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 exam itself. You're gonna hate the process. So you have you have to take frequent breaks and uh, enjoy yourself a little bit. Uh, and try not to compare your progress with others because each 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 of us has, has his own pace, has his own uh, strengths. Uh, uh, so try not to uh, see what your colleagues are doing and how far they've reached. Because as I said, you have your own goals, you have your own plan, just stick to it and follow it. And you, you, you will get to the point where you, where you wanna be at. So uh, move, move at your own pace. Uh, don't forget that you have multiple attempts, okay? So even if, if the first time you take the exam, you did not get the score that, uh, that, that you were looking for, it's okay. Uh, Prepare, you know, uh, for the for the next attempt, and inshallah, it's gonna, you're, you're going to have a, you know, uh, an improvement in your score. And it, and this is usually the trend. Most most people, yeah, and they take the exam, they, they don't score uh, the uh, the score that they that they want, uh, and in the second or, or the third attempt, they usually achieve the score that they want. So it's okay. Don't be hard on yourselves. And remember, you're not a machine. Your best is different every day. Okay. So sometimes you're uh, ahead, sometimes you're behind, it's fine. Uh, what is a good score? Uh, so the scoring system of SME uh, is a, a three digit system from 200 to 800. The passing mark is 560 or 60% 60 of, the, of the exam. So you have to uh, uh, answer 60% of the questions correctly in order to pass the exam. And a good score is a very subjective matter. You know, it's it's hard to say, well, this is a good score. Uh, if you don't score that, you know, specific score, it, it, your score is bad. No, uh, it differs based on your uh, speciality of interest and the effort that 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 you're putting into uh, into your uh, uh, into your exam. Okay, so some specialties, uh, especially like uh, comparative surgical specialties, like plastic surgery, ophthalmology. Uh, uh, neurosurgery, yeah, of course you have to have, you have to have high score, at least at least eighty in the exam. Sometimes even eighty five, uh, you know, uh, is barely making it. Okay, so uh, if you're looking for a very competitive specialty, score as high as you can. Okay, uh, remember that the SME score accounts for fifty percent, as we said, uh, and it's a big chunk of your score. So the higher the better. Okay, so. Uh, personal experience. So uh, for me, 
uh, my experience was a bit different than than the, than the usual you know way of studying for the SME because when I took my SME uh, exam, I've already taken my uh, SME uh, exams, step one and step two. Uh, Dr. Ma'an, uh, he mentioned that the exams are different, and yes, they are very different. You know, the, the SME and the SME, they're at all different uh, uh, when it comes to the type of questions, the, the way the questions are written, uh, the topics that are covered. However, uh, for me, because, it's, because I prepared for the SME, I had a very good you know, knowledge base. Uh, uh, sometimes I, uh, when I like go over the previous collections uh, and the previous questions, I can, you know, uh, I can know that this answer is wrong. Okay, based on the based on my SME study, studying. Okay, uh, sometimes I not have I not I have to go to like ambos or up to date because uh, I know that from SME that you know this particular question is wrong or this particular answer is wrong. Uh, so this saves me a lot, a lot of time, and my my SME preparation was not as long as some people uh, usually prepare. Uh, so uh, my, I, I took my, my SMLE exam right after I took my SMLE step two exam, uh, around three weeks after. So in, in these three weeks, I, I, I tried to study as much uh, previous collections as I could, and then I took my exam. So you took your, your, your exam the first time, you, you got a score, it's not the score that you want. So what to do if I'm going to take, to take the exam again, okay? And this is, this is what I did. Uh, I, took, I took the exam two times. The first time, alhamdulillah, I, I had a good score, but I still wanted to improve my score. So the, for, the, for the second time that I uh, went for the exam, uh, I, uh, I went through the question piles, the, the, pre, the, the previous questions, the collections. Uh, I just I had a quick look at these questions. I generated a list of most commonly asked, asked topics and concepts. I studied these concepts from, you know, Ambos mainly, okay? And then after I studied these topics from Ambos, I went back to the question files and I tried to apply the knowledge that I had from Ambos to, uh, to the previous collections. Uh, and then I used other, of course, resources like up to date to uh, make sure that my answers are, uh, are as correct as possible, okay? Sometimes even by asking around, by looking at the resources, some questions you will never find the answer for, okay? Uh, usually uh, the questions or some questions in the SMLE, they have uh, no uh, resource uh, that, that you can refer back to. Sometimes it's based on the, the one who wrote the question, based, based, on, his, based on his experience, based, based on his, the way he pra practices medicine. So sometimes they're not uh, based on a specific resource. So for these questions, it's very hard to uh, to find the correct answer for because it's based on the one who wrote the question. Uh, and in general, uh, I, like I found the trend, maybe some some people would agree with me. Uh, usually, uh, questions in the exam uh, about internal medicine usually they are the newest. Usually, the, the, the internal medicine questions they usually updated, so you, you might find uh, a lot of new questions in internal medicine. Uh, for surgery, you will find a lot of vague questions or questions that are way beyond our level. They will ask about specific surgeries, specific techniques in surgeries, and you know this is beyond you know an, an intern's level. For pediatrics and OB/GYN, usually they're straightforward, and usually the previous questions are enough to uh, to cover these topics. So exam day tips. Uh, so before the, you know, like one week before the exam or a few days before the exam, try to have a, a routine in your life, okay? Uh, you know, have a scheduled routine, wake up in the morning, study, and then, you know, have some free time, then study again. So, and try to have a, you know, uh, a set time where you sleep. So try to have a routine in your life because it's going to make it easier for you. Uh, so sleep well, of course, sleeping is very important. Uh, there, I, I can't tell you how much sleep can affect how we perform in the exam. Uh, some, some might think, you know, if I uh, studied more, you know, the night before I, uh, I, I went over the questions again, it might help. Uh, I, I honestly think it's, it's not gonna help a lot, okay? But if you have a fresh mind in the exam, it will help you a lot. Know the location of the exam center, uh, but the parking availability and reporting time. Uh, it's, you just keep that in mind because you might go to the exam center, you will not find it easily. You have to look for parking, so, you know, the night before the exam, have all of these things sorted out in your mind. So you'll be focused on the exam only. 
uh, take water and a snack with you because uh, remember it's, it's a six hour exam with, with, with 45 minute uh, break. So it's, it's a long exam. So you will be exhausted in the middle. So have a snack with you. During the exam itself, try not to uh, second guess yourself. Okay, so be confident in your answers and just you know stick with your gut. If, if your gut tells you this is the answer, just go for it, okay? Uh, bottom, up, bottom up approach, this can uh, help you save time. So uh, this is what I usually do. I read the, I read the last you know, line of the question or the, uh, the last two lines of the question. If the question is very clear and I can answer it from only the last uh, line or the last two lines, I just go for it. If not, I, I start reading you know, from the beginning. Uh, and this is, this is especially helpful uh, because uh, if, you have a, if, you, if you have a repeated question, okay, uh, don't, don't bother yourself with reading the, the entire question. You know it's repeated. You know? If you read the last you know, sentence, you know that this question is repeated. Okay, just go for the answer that from, the, from the previous collection and just move on. This will save you time. Uh, try to memorize the normal values of the most common labs, like CBC, renal function, liver function, because in the exam, they, they don't give you normal labs. Okay? There is not like a specific sheet where you have the normal labs. Sometimes in the question itself, they will, they will give you the normal lab, uh, but not all of the questions have normal labs. So if you have the normal labs in your mind, it's going to save you time. It's going to make you more confident in your answers. So in summary, uh, start as early as you can. Uh, by the beginning of internship, you should have taken your first attempt. Uh, have a plan and limit your resources, uh, previous questions, maybe almost up to date, and uh, uh, and partners, okay, St study partners, and uh, you know, gather with your friends to, to, to review. Uh, have a clear objective and have a realistic goal, and try not to compare yourself with others. Everyone has his own pace, everyone has his own abilities, so it's fine. Move at your own pace, you have your own goal, just uh. Keep working hard to reach your goal. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. Doctor. Then. Uh, أنا عندي سؤال والله هنا كموضوع ال When's the best time to prepare? فمثلاً عندي أنا حالياً في جامعة الإمام. Uh, the way that my subjects are now, I'm going to end it light. I'm going to end this year with light subjects. في ناس أنا قد سألتهم الموضوع إنه should I start earlier than normal? They they told me no. وفي ناس يقولون إيه ابدأ إذا ما هو ضارك. بس أنا اللي سمعته إنه بالذات موضوع التجميعات. Uh, it's not good to start with. All the uh, يعني تجمعات الباتشز الأقدم لأنه most likely they will not repeat itself يعني فمثلا أنا الآن على وقتي ما أقدر أذاكر تجمعات الشباب اللي جالسين يختبرون الآن فهمت okay. فهل هذا صحيح الكلام ولا لا؟ شوف آه يعني من ناحية التجميعات آه صح أن هي تختلف من سنة لسنة ولكن في أشياء كثير يعني إذا السؤال إذا السؤال كان مختلف ولكن الفكرة تكون نفسها فاهم كيف؟ فحتى اذا بدات يعني من من قبل الامتياز او نهايه اخر سنه راح تستفيد 100% راح تستفيد والاسئله حتى التجميعات راح تفيدك. ولكن افضل ممكن افضل انك قبل اختبارك انك تركز اكثر على التجميعات خلاص التجميعات اللي اللي هي موست ريسنت هذه هذه اللي تركز عليها ولكن التجميعات اللي ذكرتها من قبل حتساعدك حيكون عندك على الاقل خلفيه ممتازه جدا على الاسئله. Uh, uh, guys, if you have any more questions, then uh, do save them for the panel session at the end. Dr. Bafstream will be in the panel session and you can ask your questions then. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the uh, beneficial presentation. Um, we will now move on to the next uh, talk.